Order. Statement, the Secretary of State for the Home Department. Secretary Sajid Javid. With permission, Mr Speaker, I would like to make a statement on the arrest of Julian Assange. This morning, after nearly seven years inside the Ecuadorian Embassy, Mr Assange was arrested for failing to surrender in relation to his extradition proceedings. He was later also served with a warrant for provisional arrest, pending receipt of a request for extradition to stand trial in the United States on charges relating to computer offences. His arrest follows a decision by the Ecuadorian government to bring to an end his presence inside the embassy in London. I am pleased that President Moreno has taken this decision and I extend the UK's thanks to him for resolving this situation. Ecuador's actions recognise that the UK criminal justice system is one in which rights are protected and in which, contrary to what Mr Assange and his supporters may claim, he and his legitimate interests will be protected. This also reflects the improvements of the UK relationship with Ecuador under the government of President Moreno. These are a credit to the leadership of my right honourable friend, the Minister of State for Americas, and to the ongoing hard work of Foreign Office officials, both here in London and Quito. Mr Assange was informed of the decision to bring his presence in the embassy to an end by the Ecuadorian ambassador this morning, shortly before 10 a.m. The Metropolitan Police entered the embassy for the purpose of arresting and removing him. All of the police's activities were carried out pursuant to a formal written invitation signed by the Ecuadorian ambassador and in accordance with the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. I would like to take this opportunity to also thank the Metropolitan Police for the professionalism that they have shown in dealing with the immediate situation and during the last seven years. Both the UK Government and the Ecuadorian Government have become increasingly concerned about the state of Mr Assange's health. The first action of the police following the arrest was to have him medically assessed and deemed fit to detain. The Ecuadorians have made their best efforts to ensure that doctors chosen by him have had access inside the embassy and while he remains in the custody of the UK we are now in a position to ensure access to all necessary medical facilities. Proceedings will now begin according to the court timetable. Under UK law following the provisional arrest the full extradition papers must be received by the judge within 65 days. A full extradition request would have to be certified by the Home Office before being submitted to the court, after which extradition proceedings would begin. At this point, the decision as to whether any statutory bars to extradition apply would be for the UK court to determine. I will go no further in discussing the details of the accusations against Mr Assange, either in the UK's criminal justice system or in the US. But I am pleased that the situation in the Ecuadorian Embassy has finally been brought to an end. Mr Assange will now have the opportunity to contest the charge against him in open court and to have any extradition request considered by the judiciary. It is right that we implement the judicial process fairly and consistently with due respect for equality before the law. I commend this statement to the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Home Secretary for his account of events. On this side of the House, we're glad that Julian Assange will be able to access medical care, treatment and facilities, because there have been worrying reports about his ill health. Of course, at this point, this is all a matter for the courts. But on this side of the House, we want to make the point that the reason we are debating Julian Assange this afternoon, even though the only charge he may face in this country is in relation to his bail hearings, the reason we are debating this this afternoon is entirely to do with the whistleblowing activities of Julian Assange on WikiLeaks. It is this whistleblowing activity into illegal wars, mass murder, murder of civilians and corruption on a grand scale that has put Julian Assange in the crosshairs 
of the US administration. It is for this reason that they have once more issued an extradition warrant against Mr. Assange. The Home Secretary will note that Mr. Assange complained to the UN that he was being unlawfully detained as he could not leave the Ecuadorian Embassy without being arrested. And in February 2016, the UN panel ruled in his favour, stating that he had been arbitrarily detained and should be allowed to walk free and compensated for his deprivation of liberty. liberty. Mr. Assange hailed that as a significant victory, called the decision binding, but the Foreign Office responded by saying this ruling changes nothing. I note it was the Foreign Office that responded, not the Home Office or the Ministry of Justice. The Foreign Office has no responsibility for imprisonment and extradition in this country, but it is, of course, interested in relations with allies and others. We have precedent in this country in relation to requests for extradition to the US when the US authorities raise issues of hacking and national security. I would remind the House of the case of Gary McKinnon. In October 2012, when the, the current Prime Minister was Home Secretary, an extradition request very similar to this one was refused. And we should recall what WikiLeaks actually disclosed. Who can forget the Pentagon video footage of a, mi a missile attack in 2007 in Iraq which killed 18 civilians and two Reuters journalists? It is the monumental amount of leaks such as this that lifted the veil on US-led military operation in a variety of theatres none of which have produced a favourable outcome from the people of those countries. Julian Assange is not being pursued to protect US national security. He is being pursued because he has exposed wrongdoing by US administrations and their military forces. And we only have to look at the treatment of Chelsea Manning to see what awaits him if he's extradited to the US. Ms Manning has already been incarcerated between 2010 to 2017. She was originally sentenced to 35 years. Her indefinite detention now is because she refuses to participate in partial disclosure, which would allow whistleblowers to be pursued, not the perpetrators. And her human rights and protections as a transgender woman have been completely ignored. Her human rights as a transgender woman have been completely ignored, and I would hope members on the, the other side of the House would take that seriously. And what it has to do with Julian Assange's case is this could be the type of treatment that he could expect if he's extradited to the US. In this country, we have protections for whistleblowers, including the Public Interest Disclosure Act. 1998 and others, even if some of us feel these protections should be more robust. Underpinning this legislation is the correct premise, not that anyone can leak anything they like, but there should be protection afforded to those who take personal risk to disclose wrongdoing where that disclosure serves the public interest. Julian Assange is at risk of extradition to the US precisely because on this side of the House, we believe he has disclosed material that is in the utmost public interest. This is now in the hands of the British Law Courts. We have the utmost confidence in the British legal system, but we would say on this side of the House, we would be very concerned that on the basis of what we know, Julian Assange was extradited to the US. Yeah, the <laughs> uh, Mr Speaker, can I first of all thank the Right Honourable Lady for her response. Uh, but Mr Speaker, uh, you know, I think the, the whole country, if they listen to her response, they will be pretty astounded by the tone that she has taken. And you know, she talked first of all, she started talking about the reason for uh, Mr Assange's uh, arrest and try to come up with all sorts of justifications herself, which have nothing to do with the reason. The reason Mr Assange has been arrested is because he failed to surrender to a UK court. Yeah. That's why he's been arrested. And there was a provisional arrest warrant, which is subject to extradition proceedings, but that is the uh, usual procedures, procedures under UK law. And there's no one in this country that is above the law. And the right honourable lady, who we should remember wants to be the Home Secretary 
is suggesting that we should not apply the rule of law to an individual. That's right, she, she's, she's disagreeing sitting from her position, but she is implying, she's saying actually quite clearly that Mr Assange should be not subject to UK law, and that is something that should worry every, any British citizen should she ever become Home Secretary. I, I, I will, she, she, can, she can intervene later if, she, if the Speaker allows her, that's, uh, that's possible, but I, I do wish to finish my comments in response uh, to hers. She also talked about the UN, as though the UN had some opinion on this, and I'm sure it's not intentional, but uh, she, she would be at risk of uh, not giving quite correct information, Mr Speaker, because the UN has no view on the Assange case. I think what she was actually referring to was the view of a group of uh, independent persons that uh, have decided to look at this case. They do not speak for the UN in any way whatsoever. Uh, it's a small group of uh, individuals where, who came up with a deeply flawed opinion, su suggesting that somehow Mr Assange was indefinitely detained in the UK by the British authorities, when in fact the only person responsible for Mr Assange's detention is himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was entirely self-inflicted and it's astonishing the Right Honourable Lady should even bring up that report and suggest somehow that it was a UN view or a UN report. And then the Right Honourable Lady talked about uh, the, uh, the US request for extradition. Uh, I won't be drawn into the request for extradition. It's rightly a matter for the courts. Should the courts deem it uh, correct and necessary at some point to send it to me as a request for extradition, I will consider it appropriately under uh, our laws. But, Mr Speaker, I note that the Shadow Home Secretary, both today and in the past, and indeed the Leader of the Opposition, have defended Assange and WikiLeaks from efforts to tackle their illegal activity. They, they, they could have clarified that today for the British public. The Right Honourable Lady could have done that on behalf of the opposition, and she did. So why is it, Mr Speaker, that whenever someone has a track record of undermining the UK and our allies and the values we stand for, you can almost guarantee that the leadership of the party opposite will support those who intend to do us harm? You can always guarantee that from the party opposite. Dr Julian Lewis. How much has the police operation cost guarding the embassy and is there any prospect of recovering any of this money perhaps from Mr Assange's celebrity backers? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Secretary. It's, it, Mr Speaker, it's an interesting uh, suggestion of cost recovery uh, from my honourable friend, but I, I can tell him uh, up to 2015, the figures I have for up to 2015, uh, the police operation has cost uh, an estimated 13 Point two million pounds. Patrick Grady. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also thank the Home Secretary for advance sight of his statement. I'm sure his uh, swift actions and determination to appear before the House have not been lost on his audience on the Tory back benches. Um, it's right that nobody is above the law, and in many ways, uh, today's actions mean at least one kind of deadlock has been broken, and that's perhaps important, at least from the health and well-being point of view. But at the same time, human rights under the law are inviolable. And the treatment that Mr Assange receives in the period to come must take place with appropriate due process and with respect to the protection of his rights that the Home Secretary stresses. So can he confirm that nobody should be extradited from the United Kingdom if they face an unfair trial or a cruel and unusual punishment in the destination country? And can he also assure us that any judicial process here in the United Kingdom will be carried out with as much transparency as possible and with all appropriate opportunity for review and appeal as necessary? <laughs> Mr Speaker, I am actually very happy to, to uh, agree with the Honourable Gentleman what he said. Uh, th this country has a long and proud tradition of uh, human rights, and when it comes to extradition requests, wherever they may come from, uh, it is absolutely right that the courts and the government consider an individual's human rights. Um, Sir Hugo Soir. And so this uh, story moves to its conclusion, having cost the British taxpayer uh, millions of pounds. Uh, having ruined relations during that period between uh, Ecuador and the United Kingdom, and I very much hope that those relations can now be uh, sustained and nurtured. Uh, but let me just say two things, if I may, Mr Speaker. We should not allow Mr Assange to get away with the idea, one, that he was arbitrarily detained, which is ridiculous when he could have walked out of that door any one time, 
and secondly the fact that he had no charges to answer originally in Sweden because the Swedish prosecutor would have needed to interview him personally, something that he never allowed her to do. Those two facts need to be put right in the middle of, of this ridiculous story. Secretary. Mr Speaker, my right honourable friend has made a, a number of uh, important points and uh, he also refers to our relationship with Ecuador, uh, which is uh, very good and I think uh, today's uh, outcome shows that and, and as I said and I will say again thanks to the, the hard working efforts of the Minister of State for the Americas and the Foreign Office uh, the, those relationships are very strong uh, today and, and when it comes to Mr Assange's uh, detention uh, my right honourable friend is absolutely right to remind the House that a detention this is a self-inflicted detention this was a decision by Mr Assange to lock himself up for seven years MC Lucas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm pleased that the right honourable gentleman mentioned Sweden because the Home Secretary didn't mention Sweden and the fact that, that there was the proceedings in Sweden which led, as I understand it, to the to the warrant being issued originally. Is it in fact the case that the Swedish proceedings will be continuing? And if there is any comp competitive aspect between the Swedish prosecution and the United States prosecution, how will that be resolved? Mr Speaker, I can tell the Honourable Gentleman that the original uh, extradition request was a Swedish extradition request, but then uh, at a later date the Swedish authorities chose to withdraw their request. Whether there is a, an existing or new Swedish request, I can either confirm uh, or deny. And should there be for any individual more than one extradition request, that would be dealt in the usual way by the courts. Bob Seeley. Mr. Speaker, I understand the extradition, the potential extradition to the US is in relation to the half a million leaked documents in the Chelsea Manning case. Would you agree that there's a more serious and disturbing case potentially against Julian Assange for his and WikiLeaks' role in the Kremlin's 2016 attempts to interfere and manipulate the US presidential elections when WikiLeaks was used by Russian military intelligence, the GRU, as the primary vehicle to disseminate the stolen documents hacked by the GRU from the Democratic Party. And while some see him as an information war hero, others see him as a useful stooge of, of an authoritarian state. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure my honourable friend would uh, understand it. It would be inappropriate for me to uh, to refer to any uh, the accusations that may or may not be made against uh, Mr Assange. Uh, but uh, I understand that my honourable friend has talked about this on a number of occasions, including, as I understand it today, on the world at one. He's very articulate, and I'm sure that many people would have heard him. Mr Edward Davy. Can I thank the Home Secretary for his statement? And clearly today's arrest is correct. Uh, but looking ahead, will the Home Secretary confirm that any extradition request from the United States will be considered by the Home Office and including in that consideration there will be a public interest test consideration and a press freedom uh, consideration and indeed that any court hearing an extradition uh, uh, case uh, would, it would also be able to consider a public interest test and a press freedom defence. Secretary. Mr Speaker, I thank the right honourable gentleman for his uh, support for today's action. And in relation to what happens next uh, with, with respect to the extradition uh, request, that will be, uh, in the first instance, it's a matter for the courts. Uh, there will be, once a full extradition request uh, is received, uh, my department will receive that and we will determine whether it is uh, certifiable or not. But after that, it, it will go to the courts and the courts will have to make the initial decisions according to our law. Stuart. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, Julian Assange says apparently that his personal space has been violated, which is a bit rich considering the number of people who have been put in extreme danger among our allies. Home Secretary. Well, uh, it perhaps might be appropriate, Mr Speaker, to draw uh, attention to the statement today from President Moreno of Ecuador, where, and I quote, he said that uh, today I announced that the discourteous and aggressive behaviour of Mr Julian Assange uh, has uh, led him uh, to his actions, so it, it does tell you something in itself. Diana Johnson. Mr. Speaker, um, I'm really concerned that uh, a man suspected of rape, which yeah. is what in this case actually happened, yeah. Yeah. was able to uh, do what he did for several years to escape justice. And I've seen media reports that uh, lawyers for the victims in Sweden 
are uh, taking steps to try and start the proceedings off again. I wondered if the Home Secretary might be able to investigate that and let the House know, because I'm sure there are many members of Parliament who are very anxious about this matter. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I do, I, I do understand uh, very much uh, uh, the, uh, the, the concerns of the Honourable Lady, and it, again it would be inappropriate for me to talk about any accusations that have been made by whether it's from, from Sweden or elsewhere uh, against uh, uh, Mr Assange. Uh, she may want to reflect her, the Honourable Lady on the words that were actually used by her front branch. And actually, in the past, in, in December 2010, 7th of December 2010, the Right Honourable Lady, that is now the Shadow Home Secretary, uh, was openly tweeting her support for Mr Assange. And the Honourable Lady on the, on the opposition back benches might like, want to actually reflect on the leadership she's receiving from her own front bench. Matt Warman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the Right Honourable Gentleman for uh, Surbiton is right to praise press freedom, and I know the Home Secretary is an advocate for press freedom. But whatever the Shadow Home Secretary says, is it not the case that responsible journalists do not play fast and loose with the national interest and put our people in danger when it should not be happening? Yeah. 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 Mr. Uh, Speaker, my, my honourable friend, uh, a distinguished former journalist himself, is absolutely right in, in what he said. Press freedom in this country is sacrosanct, but what we find is that, by and large, uh, people that work in the press in this country are responsible. Clive Efford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I find it extraordinary that somebody who is just rich and powerful, or, or powerful anyway, can just avoid a, 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 an allegation of, a rapist, of being a rapist in the way that Julian Assange has done for so many years, costing so much taxpayers money. Can the, uh, Secretary, uh, can the Home Secretary tell us who is paying the bill for the uh, £13.2 million that Julian Assange has, uh, has cost us? Is it, is it the people of London in cuts to their police service, or does it come from a central budget? And, uh, Mr Speaker, again, I, I do understand very much the, uh, the sentiment of the Honourable uh, Gentleman. I think he speaks for, for many people across the House. The answer to who's paid that bill, and I referred earlier to the 13.2 million up to uh, 2015, uh, that has come from various sources, but each one of those are the British taxpayers, and that's why they would welcome justice that's being done today. Stephen Kerr. Speaker, it's right and proper that my right honourable friend, the Home Secretary, has paid tribute to the Minister of State for Europe and the Americas for the work he's done, but it's also appropriate to pay tribute to the strength, the resilience and the patience of the British Diplomatic Service. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, Mr Speaker, I very much agree with my honourable friend, and in particular, if I may, is uh, pick out the British Ambassador in Ecuador, who has been absolutely brilliant in how she has pursued this, how she has worked with uh, her counterparts in uh, Ecuador and Ecuadorian ministers and others, and indeed the, the ministers in the Foreign Office. And, and good luck to Matthew with his. <laughs> Ross Thompson. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Can I join my right honourable friend in sending our gratitude to President Moreno for his decision, and does he agree with me that it is totally right that Mr Assange will now face justice and that he will do so in the proper way with the proper protections of the British legal system? Absolutely, I can give that assurance to my honourable friend. Uh, today is a very good day uh, for justice. The, the British legal system, our, our defence of the rule of law, and uh, the fairness of our legal system is world-renowned, and that is exactly what Mr Assange will receive. Mike Wood. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I join honourable members in thanking my right honourable friend for his statement and the Metropolitan Police for their effective action uh, this morning. The Ecuadorian President has indicated that Julian Assange repeatedly violated the conditions of his asylum at the Embassy. Does my right honourable friend have any further details of such violations? Uh, Mr Speaker, the, uh, first of all, can I join my honourable friend in, uh, in, in his thanks for the Metropolitan Police who, who have uh, for many years done an outstanding job, but today uh, certainly in, in making sure Mr Assange was arrested and presented in front of the courts. And um, the, the, he asked me about the Ecuadorian uh, government. I might uh, point his attention uh, to the uh, statement that's been made today in, in a video message by President Moreno, and uh, he has talked there about 
about how Mr. Assange, in the opinion of the President, uh, has been discourteous uh, and aggressive and, uh, there, uh, and makes a number of accusations against Mr. Assange, which is uh, one of the reasons that the President decided, as a sovereign decision of the Ecuadorian state, to remove what they call diplomatic asylum. Th thank you uh, uh, to the Home Secretary very much indeed and to colleagues.